Hello again, and welcome to my garage review of the Vespa GTS 250 IE 2006 model after four weeks of ownership and 500 miles on the road. The Vespa has an easy recognisable and iconic style. I have added a fly screen to mine, a 42 litre top box, a mud flap and a 12 volt Optimate connector to enhance the single piece steel bodywork. This model handles exceptionally well at slow speed and tempts you to ride with your sport bike pals on twisty roads. However, being a full valve single cylinder machine, developing only 21.7 brake horsepower and weighing in at 150 kilograms, don't expect fire blade performance, but you can expect a huge grin on your face every time you ride it. The 247cc engine pulls to about 80 miles an hour, delivering you efficiency of 64 miles per gallon. It costs about £9 to fill the tank, and this will give you about 100 miles of two-up riding. The 250IE will reach 31 miles an hour in 3.9 seconds, and 62 in 14.9 seconds. But most impressively, it will go from 31 to 50 miles an hour in 4.2 seconds, making it ideal around town, but also enough zip to overtake slow cars on the open road. The power unit is a liquid-cooled 249cc fuel-injected Quasar engine that runs on unleaded fuel. The Twist & Go delivers exceptionally smooth acceleration by means of a continuous variable transmission. This system was developed to replace the traditional automatic gearbox in high-end executive cars. The tinted fly screen enhances an otherwise bare headlamp housing and is less intrusive than the full windscreen, being framed nicely by the traditional Vespa wing mirrors. The leg guard houses the round town light and front indicators. Both the round town light and headlamp are on at all times. The front bumper sports a chrome fin. The 12 inch wheels are competent with a single swing arm front and rear. There is a single front shock absorber and two adjustable rear shocks. There are two 20mm disc brakes front and rear. The rear brake is the most effective of the two because most of the weight is over the back wheel. Simultaneous use of both brakes slows the bike effectively with minimal front end dive. The passenger foot pegs are a design triumph but can be awkward for the passenger and the passenger's foot is inconveniently placed when the rider puts their foot down. The inside of the leg protector houses on the left a compartment for an alarm to be attached. On the right, the coolant reservoir. In the centre, the bag carrier, and to the left of that, the seat release button. The glove box is opened by pressing the key deeper into the ignition socket. Inside the glove box is a manual seat release pull for use when the battery is flat or disconnected. The battery is located under the floor mat and can be accessed by removing the four screws. The dash includes an analog speedometer and a digital display showing time, outside temperature, revs, fuel gauge, engine temperature and mileage. The temperature can be switched from Celsius to Fahrenheit and the recorded mileage can be swapped from miles to kilometres. The right handlebar houses the kill switch and starter. The handlebar on the left houses the full beam switch, indicator switch and horn. This model benefits from a centre stand as well as a side stand. The side stand is spring loaded and pops up when you pull the bike onto the wheels.
the rider and passenger seats are very comfortable, enhanced by the passenger backrest when the top box is fitted. Once you pop the seat, it is easily lifted to reveal the underseat storage area and petrol cap. The underseat storage module is easily lifted out to reveal the Quasar engine. This is where I mounted my Optimate connector. Finally, I'll start the Vespa up so you can hear the silky smooth belt driven engine.